session. How are you doing? I pray that all is well with you and your families at this time. So today we are on the 19th day of the Purushottam Mass Challenge and I pray that all is going well with your Vrat. I'm sure it must be second nature by now. There's a saying that if you do something for 17 days, then after that it becomes a habit. So we are on 19 days. So I'm sure whatever you've been doing for the Lord for this month, offering out of love, uh, he's very grateful for it, getting the full blessings of Purushottama, Sri Krishna. And today in Bhagavad Gita, we are on the third verse of this three sloki Gita, verse number 18. We were hearing how Arjuna was asking, Vedascha sarve raham eva vedyo vedanta krit veda chaham. Arjuna was hearing about this from Krishna and he's saying, well, Krishna, really, you're the knower, you're the compiler and the goal of the Vedas is to know you. Then please give me the essence of all the Vedas. And then Krishna spoke these three verses which we were covering, uh, 16, 17 and today we are doing 18. These three verses describe the Sambandha, Abhideya and Prayojana. These are the three steps of relationship, process and goal of the Vedas. So today we, it's culminating in the whole chapter of what is this Purushottam Yoga about? Who is this Purushottama? Who exactly this is? Because Krishna out of his humility, he doesn't, um, he doesn't have to speak about himself. And he was always talking about himself in the third person, that he does this, that this Supreme Person does this, this Supreme Person does that, all the planets are emanating from him. Today he's going to say, I am that Arjun. I am that Supreme Purushottam. The Purushottam that you've been looking for and hearing about and observing Vrat for Purushottam Mass. <laughs> that Purushottam is me. So let's hear from the Bhagavad Gita then. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, text number 8. Yasmat Ksharam Atitoham Aksharad Api Chotamaha Atosmin Loke Vedacha Pratita Purushotamaha Translation Because I am transcendental beyond both the fallible and the infallible and because I am the greatest, I am celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as that Supreme Person. So let's go over the translation again carefully. Because I am transcendental beyond both the fallible and the infallible. So I think we've really made this point. We were discussing how these three verses is the essence of Vedanta philosophy. And it's the most powerful verses to defeat Mayavad philosophy, that we are one and we merge into the light and we merge into God, we become God that we are actually God, but we come into a forgetful condition here and then we go back, we become one with God. This is all nonsense. This is all just somebody's doctrine. If they want to keep that doctrine and follow that doctrine, that's fine. But don't mislead others. Don't mislead innocent people who actually want to know what Krishna has said. And here you can see directly from Bhagavad Gita as it is, what Krishna is saying. So Krishna is saying directly, this is direct from the translation. It's not a purport. It's direct translation. Krishna is saying here, because I am transcendental beyond both the fallible and the infallible. So clearly, there's a, he's saying that is a transcendental nature that I have, that body, that body, that form, Purusha, that form that you sing is transcendental and secondly it's beyond this fallible and infallible the liberated and the conditioned 
So immediately he establishes his identity, that I have an identity, but it's not a material one. And it's transcendental and it's beyond both this fallible and infallible, the conditioned and the liberated state. I think now it's irrefutable that uh, Mayavad philosophy doesn't hold any water. It cannot stand any substance. Krishna clearly is saying here, Yasmat Charam Atitoham, hmm? that I am this, this other being that's there who's transcendental and who's beyond this uh, fallible and infallible. Prabhupada, the translation goes on to say, and because I am the greatest, so we know our Muslim brothers pray in this way, Allahu Akbar. And the translation of that means, Oh God, you are the greatest. So we hear that all the time. Even here in Mayapur, there's many, many mosques here in Mayapur. And at those particular sandhyas, those particular times, we know our Muslim brothers, they pray almost six times a day. So we also do six artis a day. Uh, but at those sandhyas, you can hear them crying out and praying to God that you are, we acknowledge you as Purushottam, you are the greatest. So whenever you hear this, I think it's called namaz or hazan, uh, these prayers that the Muslim uh, devotees do, you can always remember Purushottam because this is what they are saying, you are the greatest. Hmm? Allahu Akbar, you are the greatest. This is the same thing Krishna is saying here in Gita. I, because I am that, Krishna is saying here, I am the greatest. I am the greatest being. Because greatest means there is no higher than that. Just like is declared in Gita 7.7. Matta paratanan nanyat kinchit asti dhananjaya mai sarva midam prokta sutra maniganayava. He is saying that there is no truth superior to me, Arjun. Everything is strung upon me just like pearls are strung on a thread. Sutra Maniganayava. Hmm? Just like pearls are on a thread, everything is supported by me. So Krishna is declaring here that that greatest being, Purusha Uttama, the topmost person, the greatest being, that is me. Translation goes on to say, I am celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as that supreme person. So finally we're hearing about the prayojan of the Vedas, the goal of the Vedas. Vedascha sarver aham eva vedyo is telling Arjun. Sarvascha ham ridhisane visto matta smittir jnanam apohanam scha vedascha sarver aham eva vedyo vedavit vedakrit vedavit eva chaham I am the knower of the Vedas, I am the compiler of the Vedas and by me the Vedas is to be known. The goal of the Vedas is me. So here he is declaring that same point that all in the world, wherever there is religiosity and there is religion, dharma, people are following religiosity, there must be a goal to that religiosity. And what is the goal of that? Me. I am the goal of that religion. I am the goal of that spiritual tradition. So he's declared that in the world. And then if you see in the Vedas, why is he mentioning the Vedas? Because the Jnani is aspiring here. And the Jnani will only accept Vedas. He'll not accept anything material knowledge from this world because it's fallible. He wants the infallible knowledge, which is from the Vedas. And what is the Vedas goal? Vedas chasarve rahameva vedyo is to know me. So Krishna has just declared his superiority and his supremacy in this material world as Purushottam, beyond a doubt. Srila Prabhupada starts the purport. Purport, no one can surpass the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, neither the conditioned soul or neither the conditioned soul nor the liberated soul. So nobody can surpass the Supreme Being. He's stressing this point because of this merging idea that you now you are in a conditioned state, you are God, 
and now you're in a conditioned state and then when you become liberated you merge into the oneness and become one back with God so Prabhupada is saying nobody can there's no such idea like this this is a concocted doctrine because it becomes very easy then to accept that we all are one we all that your idea of enjoying in this world it substantiates then our devious idea of even coming to this world because we want to be God. So when material aspirations of wanting to be God has failed, now we're using the same idea for spiritual aspirations. Just see how devious the mind has become. We have tried to be God materially. We failed hopelessly. Nothing here we can control. Everything we try to control, we destroy here. And when all that has failed, hey, let's try spiritually trying to be God now. That sounds nice. I can still be God. Actually, that's a better place to be. Because now once everybody, once, I'm, uh, once I convince myself I'm God and, then, and I convince the world, then people will start bowing down to me. I become the center again. So this is the source of that crazy doctrine. This is the source of that kind of convoluted, twisted-minded doctrine. The source of it is that you still want to be God. You still want to enjoy separate from God. Can you see how deep-rooted it is? Therefore, when you start serving Krishna, you can only serve if you are subordinate to. You can only serve if you are subordinate. But Krishna serves out of love. You can only serve if you are subordinate to someone. If you acknowledge your position as being subordinate, then only you can serve in this material world. But in the spiritual world, there they serve, but they serve out of love. Even Krishna then becomes subordinate because of love. He serves his devotee as a servant because of love. Here we're not serving because of love. We're serving because of hate, because of envy. That's why we are uh, the center here. He's the center there because he loves everybody more than they love him. Do you see that connection between servant and the Supreme Lord? When the material world, when there's no love, when there's hate, envy, greed, the six vices, when that's the center, then when that's the driving force, then we become the center. In the spiritual world, Love is the driving force. Krishna becomes the center. So this is why the servant is actually bigger than the Lord. Because the connection is through love. So that's why Prabhupada used to say, the devotee doesn't want to become God. He wants to become bigger than God. <laughs> Not that he wants it, but he becomes that because of his love. Because of his selfless love, he becomes bigger he, God, washes his feet. Sudama Brahman. Krishna is washing his feet. Hmm? Why? Because he, of love. When there's love, there's no, or none of these negative vices, then the heart just melts. You just want to be with that person. You just want to serve that person. Prabhupada goes on to say, he is, he is therefore the greatest of personalities. Now it is clear here that the living entities and the Supreme Personality of Godhead are individuals. So there's no way that they are merge and become one. And we were substantiating with logic yesterday and the past two, three days that if there is no individuality, then what is the purpose of love? Love needs two. We have no experience in this world where one, where love means one. It's only in our conditioned state. It's called narcissism, where you are so infatuated with yourself that you love yourself so much. You are the center of everything. That's a sickness. That's a conditioning. That's a disease. But in nature, naturally, love means you need two living conscious entities. You need two. So why are we cultivating love throughout our whole life and sadhana and doing all this and, talk and developing love and then we merge and become one? Then where's the, where's the goal of love after that? Why we practice love to do that? 
it doesn't make sense. So therefore Prabhupada is saying individuality, they both are individuals, they never merge. Prabhupada goes on to say, the difference is that the living entities either in the conditioned state or in the liberated state cannot surpass in quantity the inconceivable potencies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we have certain abilities, we have certain potencies, but nothing compared to God. And we kept, this song has become, this sloka has become like a nursery rhyme now. Nitya Nitya Naam Chaitanas Chaitana Naam Eko Bahunam Jo Vitadadi Kaman That both are Nitya, eternal, both are Chaitanas, conscious, Eko Bahunam, yet but one Eko is supporting the other. So Prabhupada goes on to say, It is incorrect to think of the Supreme Lord and the living entities as being on the same level or equal in all respects. We are equal. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy, Achintya Beda, Abbeda Tattva, we are simultaneously equal but also different. We are equal to the Lord in quality, qualitatively. We have His qualities. Just like a drop of water from the ocean has the same quant has the same qualities as the ocean. But can you compare it quantitatively? One drop to the entire ocean? It's in, you can't even conceive it. So we are equal to God in quality. We have the same qualities as Krishna, but He is unlimited and we are limited. Therefore, the limited cannot understand the limits of the unlimited. Prabhupada goes on to say, There is always the question of superiority and inferiority between their personalities. Once we know there is superiority and inferiority, then we can start rendering service. Right now, why are we not rendering service? This is why we are hearing about how he is the moon, the light of the moon is digesting uh, our food, he's giving the taste from the moon into plants. So once we see that he's doing all these things, naturally we realize that somebody is doing so much for us, I should be, he's so merciful to me, I should serve him. I should at least be grateful to him. Therefore we become uh, servants. Because we see how much he's doing for us. We don't serve him because of slavery. Uh, we don't serve him because of mortal slavery. We are serving him because we are seeing first how much he is doing for us. That's why the pure devotee, the Uttama Adhikari is looking and seeing Krishna is doing everything here around. Every breath of air that I'm taking, water that I'm drinking, everything. Rasoham Mapsakontiya, we were saying, he is the taste in water. Without that you won't quench your thirst. So he's doing so much of things, naturally he is very merciful. Naturally, I should serve somebody like that. He's not uh, forcing us to serve. He never did. But when we read about him and what he's doing, we become aware of what he's done for us. Then we say, wow, I should definitely serve this person. Look at how kind he is. Look at how merciful he is. As we're remembering in that purport in uh, 1515 where it says, God is all good. God is all merciful. That is the point of Prabhupada saying that in that purport 15.15. Here Prabhupada goes on to say in this purport, the word Uttama is very significant. No one can surpass the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we've discussed that Uttama means he's the topmost. Nobody is superior to him. Matta paratananda nyat. There is no truth superior to me, Arjun. Hmm? Prabhupada goes on to say, the word Loke signifies in the Purusha's Agama, the Smriti scripture, so there's two categories, one is Smriti, one is Shruti. Shruti is that which is heard, Smriti is that which is remembered. Smriti Smaranam, that which is remembered. So in those scriptures, as confirmed in the Nirukti dictionary, so Nirukti is the uh, logical, is the Vedic dictionary. Nirukti is the Vedic dictionary, from that dictionary that explains the Vedic and the Vedas and the meaning of the Vedas, the meaning of each word in the Vedas. Lokyate Vedarto Nena 
The purpose of the Veda is explained by the Smriti scripture. The Supreme Lord in his localized aspect of Paramatma is also described in the Vedas themselves. The following verse appears in the Vedas, Chandogya Upanishad 8.12.3. Stavad esa samprasado smacharirat smitya param jyoti rupam sampadya svena rupena bhinis padyate sa utama purushaha. The super soul, coming out of the body, enters the impersonal Brahman jyoti. Then in his form, he remains in his spiritual identity. That supreme is called the supreme personality. This means that the supreme personality is exhibiting and diffusing his spiritual effulgence, which is the ultimate illumination. That supreme personality also has a localized aspect as Paramatma, by incarnating himself as the son of Satyavati and Parsura, he explains the Vedic knowledge as Vyasadev. So, in essence, what it's saying is that from the Lord, this effulgence is coming and he also expands himself as the localized feature, as the Paramatma, which we were hearing yesterday, in every aspect, every atom. Andantarasta paramanu chayantarastam Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajame is in every atom, every planet, everywhere he is localized. From the Vedic perspective, he is the son of Satyavati and Parshura and he is Vyasadev. So we can see from all perspectives of uh, authentic knowledge and authentic information, it's all saying that the Uttama Purusha, the Purushottama, is Krishna himself. So this concludes the third verse of the three sloki Gita, which explains irrevocably that the Supreme Lord is the Supreme Purusha and we are all his servants, both the fallible and the infallible entities. So we are reaching close to the end of the chapter, which is going to conclude the Purushottam aspect of the Bhagavad Gita. So please join us again tomorrow. Hare Krishna.